Hi guys, this is jsnown.com and I'm here with a review of the HTC 10. This is the reshaped metal flagship from HTC in 2016 and it doesn't adopt the one particle or the M particle, so it's no longer HTC One M, it's just HTC 10. Basically, the predecessor HTC One M9 was a letdown and the One A9 was a bit better but still too pricey. This phone was announced on April 12th and it was launched around the end of April and it's priced at around $700 on HTC.com. Now let's discuss the design. So first things first, it's a full metal smartphone made of aluminum. It fits the palm perfectly. It's like it was molded to the human palm. So that's very nice ergonomics wise. It measures 9mm in thickness, which is a decrease from the predecessor's 9.6mm and weighs 161 grams, an increase of 4 grams from the HTC One M9. It's still thick compared to the um, 7 or 8 millimeters that rivals measure. Galaxy S7 and LG G5 float between 7 and 8 millimeters. It's a matter of taste whether you like the chamfered edges of the back or not. They surely are beautiful looking when they're exposed to a light source. As you can see, they catch the light in a very interesting way. And the other things we're mentioning here is that this is a solid design. It feels like a beefy phone that can take the abuse of a long gaming session. We got angular and wide edges here, chamfered edges and very discreet antenna cutouts. And at the front, well, I have to say that the front side is pretty average looking. It's like a typical uh, HTC handset. It resembles the HTC One A9 quite a bit. But we have a big top side and a big bottom side and we have pretty comfy buttons both those ones and this one here and the power button is actually reached for improved uh, feedback the phone comes in silver or dark gray and in the end it may be a matter of taste but it remains a solid phone built of premium materials now the display this one is a 5.2 incher super lcd 5 quad hd screen slightly but only slightly curved and uh, it has Gorilla Glass 4 protection. We don't have a video player, so I'm going to have to resort to photos if we're going to view some clips. Okay, so albums, download, and by clips I mean the usual test sample that we rely on. So this is it. And let's draw some conclusions. We have an okay brightness, wide viewing angles, and uh, it's a less vivid experience than an AMOLED, but we do have okay blacks and a so-so contrast, not exactly mind-blowing, just good enough. And the colors are realistic, by the way. Now let's check out the pixels. So we're dealing here with pixels of the RGB stripes variety. You can see them here under the microscope. But then we proceeded as usual to measure the brightness and we achieved 495 lux units, which is quite good. We beat the HTC One M9 that had 362 lux and we're almost equal to the Huawei P9 we beat the iPhone SE and the Galaxy S5, still we're below the Samsung Galaxy A 2016 models, for example. The value is only good, not groundbreaking. We get special settings for this screen, so let's check them out. Okay, so if you go to display gestures and buttons, you can find the glove mode, font size, brightness level, color profile, which can be set to vivid or sRGB for a more realistic set of colors and less saturated. And those also have uh, sub options like those ones with a warmer and colder slider. Okay, screen timeout, daydream, navigation button, backlight, recent apps button, and motion launch gestures, which are demoed here. Double tap and swiping from the lock screen and standby screen to trigger various areas of the interface. Okay, it's a good display. It feels above the LG G5 screen, but below the one of the Galaxy S7. Now, as far as the CPU is concerned, we're running here a Qualcomm Snapdragon 820, clocked at 2.15 GHz, it has 4 cores and the Adreno 530 GPU. There's 4GB of RAM in the mix and 32 or 64GB of storage plus microSD. The phone moves pretty fluidly, doesn't suffer from lag and it's quite fast and has good performance. Of course, it doesn't have any lag because it's a flagship and it has the most powerful Snapdragon CPU on the market right now. The games run ok, we played with Shadow Blade and Riptide GP2, I'm sure you can play Mortal Kombat X, Asphalt 8, whatever FIFA title you fancy, without a problem and without any sort of overheating. Ok, so this is Riptide GP2, graphics looking hot, 
control is responsive and we are not dropping frames which is always a good thing nice reflections textures lighting and whatever else people look for when they're testing a game and now it's time to talk about the performance by relying on benchmarks this time and here we go we have to look them up so uh, for example in quadrant were placed on the third spot and when i say third spot i mean all time okay so we found quadrant and in quadrant were on the third place all time in all benchmarks so that's nice we have 45k points here good result and then we also have antutu we also did tests here very impressive result on the htc 10 were sixth place all time again but in 3d mark were uh, second place of all the phones we tested including the latest Exynos phone and the latest Snapdragon 820 flagships. Meanwhile we also did a 3D mark test and here we came out at around the, the 8th place. Usually we're on the podium, top 5 or top 10, we're about 3000 points below the Galaxy S7, not bad. In GFX Bench also top 3 and top 5 in all the sub tests so good performance and the LG G5 is only a bit, only a bit above this one. Now as far as the temperature is concerned, we also did a temperature test and what you can see here is a result of 38.1 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of playing the game Riptide GP2, so there's no overheating. And we also did another test of temperature after running the intensive benchmarks GFX bench, we achieved 36.3 degrees Celsius, so once again no overheating. Time to talk about the battery. So the HTC 10 has a lithium ion 3000 mAh unit. An increase from the 2840 mAh of the HTC One M9. On paper we are being promised up to 2 days of normal use and let's see just how much we achieved in our tests. We resolved to the screenshots again and we're trying to find those special values. Here we go, we achieve an on-screen time of 9 hours and 16 minutes of continuous HD video playback which is only good, I would not call it stellar or fantastic, it's 40 second place in all of our tests so far, it's below the LG AKA and the Coolpad Modena, which are basically entry level phones, so it could be better. At least we surpassed the OnePlus 2, the Nexus 6P, and the HTC One M9 that scored the modest 6 hours last year. In PC Mark, that simulates continuous usage, 7 hours and 5 minutes, once again, just good. This phone is placed on the spot 30 all time. It's way above the HTC One M9 with its 4 hours and 57 minutes. And there's only one minute of difference between this one and the Galaxy S6. We beat the Galaxy S6 Edge, but we scored below the Xiaomi Mi 5. Charging was actually quite good, 1 hour and 39 minutes, 12 plates. And uh, of course better than the HTC One M9's 2 hours and 20 minutes with the boost of the quick charge support. So the charging time we achieved is superior to the Galaxy Note 4 and the LG G4 and uh, also the Galaxy S7. Okay, of course we have settings dedicated to the battery life. So let's find them. Power, got battery optimization which is pretty much a dose feature from uh, Marshmallow. And then we've got power saver which optimizes battery life and improves CPU usage, limit location services and turns off vibration feedback. Then extreme power saving mode which only lets you use several basic features like uh, phone, SMS, mail or calendar. And then that's pretty much it. So overall it's a jump from the predecessor but it doesn't break any records or beat any flagships from the current market. Now on the acoustic side HTC has been bragging a lot about this phone because it comes with high resolution acoustics, 24 bit acoustics and boom sound technology. We have a tweeter and a woofer and an amplifier for each speaker. So we have the speaker at the bottom, 5 holes here and the speaker at the top which is also the earpiece serving as the second speaker. And uh, the one above has to deal with the high notes and medium notes while the one at the bottom handles the bass basically. For some strange reason, HTC decided not to implement its own music app here, so we have to rely on Play Music, which for some another strange reason does not feature an equalizer that we can speak of, so that's odd. Okay, but let's get to playing music on this device, Pre be prepared for a pretty good experience.
Okay, conclusions. So we're dealing with a loud and clear sound, good bass, good high notes and no distortion. And there's also settings you can play with once you start playing music. You are offered the option to play with the uh, HTC Boom Sound with Dolby Audio, with a music mode and theater mode. Each one fit for certain action like watching a movie or listening to music. Of course, we put our decibel meter into action to measure what's happening here. And the results are as follows. So, 83.3 decibels which places the phone on the 44th spot all time is just okay, nothing fancy. It's below the HTC One M9 from last year that scored 86.9 decibels. It's also the equal of the Huawei Mate 8 and below the LG Nexus 5X but above the iPhone SE. Now the headphones, those are the real kicker. So maybe HTC should promote them more than they do so far. So they're quite big for modern headphones. They're high resolution headphones with aerospace grade polymer diaphragm and 70% oversized drivers. They have to, I have to say that they're very comfy and they're the loudest headphones I ever listened to in my whole life. I play with a lot of them, but those ones are the loudest. Beware, so you won't have any ear problems. I felt like my eardrums were ready to burst that's how loud they are. They have a perfect bass, great isolation and nothing wrong can be said about them. And once they're connected, there's a very interesting option to play with. So connect it here. Okay, and going back to the same area, we got the option to create an audio profile, choose one and apply Dolby headphone effects. I already have my own profile, but if you want to create your own, you press plus and you can answer questions or listen to frequencies. Here you have to answer about your age, how much time you listen to music and what's your uh, environment like, loud or not so loud and what genre you prefer. And then a special setup will be created and that's excellent. So great acoustics overall. I fancy the headphones very, very much. I couldn't find an FM radio app, so no trace of that. And now it's time to talk about the camera. So at the back, there's a 12 megapixel shooter with Ultra Pixel 2.0 technology and we got optical stabilization for this camera and for the front camera as well, believe it or not. So this feels like a strange decrease from the HTC One M9 20 megapixel camera which was a letdown. Anyway, the main sensor is the same one from what I've heard from the LG Nexus 5X and the Nexus 6P. It's the same 12 megapixel shooter but this time with optical image stabilization and f1.8 aperture instead of f2.0 like on those models. Up front we have a camera also with f1.8 aperture, optical image stabilization, screen flash, apparently use the screen for an extra bit of lighting and a wide angle lens. Once again 5 megapixel shooter at the front, 12 at the back, the camera app opens pretty fast and we got this little fellow here from Overwatch to use as our muse. Okay, so the camera UI is very straightforward. Now the camera itself offers a fast focus. So focus on the little fellow or close to him or on his paw and that happens very, very fast. We have a pretty fluid zoom, pretty fast. There's also this exposure slider here, which you can use. And other than that, we have a fast picture taking, instant picture taking actually. Okay, time to go to the options. So, on the left side of the screen, flash and HDR. And then we got photo, Zoe camera, panorama, pro, video, hyperlapse, slow motion, selfie photo, selfie video and settings, which are straightforward and include grid, geotag, shutter sound, some options related to auto smile capture and volume buttons. Photo has timer and aspect ratio. Zoe is able to capture a three second videos accompanying your shot. Panorama is straightforward and Pro comes with sub options like white balance, exposure, ISO, shutter and focus. Then we have hyperlapse which is basically a well stabilized uh, time lapse in motion and the Pro mode also offers raw file capture. Slow motion speaks for itself and that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I think I didn't forget anything and uh, those are the options that the camera has to offer. Okay, time to go to the gallery and see what's happening there. As usual, we abuse the camera, taking a huge number of shots. So let's check them out. I'm going to start off with those taken on a sunny day. So here we go. First shot, it's a landscape one with excellent details, even if you zoom in. And then we already tested the HDR. Feels like a regular shot. And then when you use the HDR, 
you can see that the image gets more natural colors and a better dynamic range. Very good close-ups and nice texture of this rose. We have quite a few flower close-ups and all of them are flagship level, not one disappointment, not one blur shot. And this is where we decided to test the zoom. So regular flag, zoom level one and maximum zoom level without losing a heartbeat or detail, quite impressive. The series of very nice looking flower macros continues with excellent colors, texture and details. So details are good in two phases, landscape and close up without any objection. Once again, a sunny day with no problems whatsoever. Okay, we also took some selfies, but they felt a bit washed out and a bit too white. At least the first ones, they felt a bit foggy, at least when seen on the PC. We have very realistic colors and once again, HDR is applied here, handling the dynamic range like a champ. I have to say that overall, the colors are not very far from the champion of realistic colors, LG G5, but the panorama somehow felt very modest with a small resolution of 8660 over 944 pixels, so that was rather odd. Okay, even more nice colors to enjoy, close-ups and all that. This is the modest panorama. It may look nice, but the resolution is small. Okay playing with the zoom yet again and I have to say I like this shade of green very much the camera handles the green colors excellently and the way the clouds were captured is also very very nice so I have to say I zoomed in a lot in these landscape shots and was impressed by the details we have perfect brightness exposure and white balance very nice texture all around for landscape shots and we also uh, caught some graffiti on image which you can see here Pretty impressive looking and as I said before we attempted more selfies but still were not very impressed by the clarity I've seen better but check out these landscape shots and excellent representations of clouds we also did a focus play at some point here we are playing with the focus here so we focused on this object and then the thing in the background very nice alternation between the two okay more shots here of ducklings floating around with zoom in so feel free to check out the gallery on gsn1.com. I have to say it's a clear upgrade from the HTC One M9. It's about on par with the Nexus 6P, but better brightness and better colors. Basically, this camera does nothing wrong, and but still, in spite of that, it doesn't feel clearly above the Galaxy S7. And uh, on the color side, the G5 from LG is a bit more realistic. Should keep in mind once again that this camera does nothing wrong. When it comes to low light capture, we have a separated galleries that I feel you must see. And here we are. These are low light shots. And I have to say, they're pretty impressive. So um, I first thought that the street light halos were a bit big. Turns out they're quite good. We have excellent brightness, no blur, great texture, and all the buildings look fantastic. We have some great close-ups and landscapes, great clarity, and I felt sometimes that this camera is able to handle low light even better than the Samsung Galaxy S7, as much as a blasphemy as that sounds. We have a very pragmatic flash and simply excellent colors and texture. While the Galaxy S7 may catch more light, well, this one catches better clarity and it beats both the LG G5 and the Galaxy S7 in low light, at least in my book. What this model does better than them is the fact that it doesn't catch any exaggeratedly white shots during the night time. It feels like about a 5% above the Galaxy S7. Okay, we're done with the photo capture. Time to talk about the videos. And I'm going to start with the daytime video. Boy, we have a lot of shots here. Of course, you can take 4K vids. You can take full HD 30 frames per second, a very good bitrate of 20 mega per second. The 4K one has 55 mega per second. One thing I noticed and it kept repeating, the microphone was fantastic. Searching for a video, here we go. This video recorded a slight focus loss at some point and some flickering colors. As you can see, it just lost focus for no reason. Well, perhaps, perhaps, I put my fingers in front of the laser focus, which you should never do, and the camera will let you know that was a sudden exposure change, but worry not, as this was a rare occurrence, and the other videos look just swell. 
Okay, so good clarity, realistic colors in general, and this is where we tested the zoom. Zoomed in to the max and so that the quality does not decrease. So that's pretty impressive. Maximum level zoom. And we even tried out the front camera. Walked around, filmed, full HD, happy with the quality, no problem whatsoever. Good optical image stabilization. And one more video here. If I'm not mistaken, this is a 4K clip or not. Let's find the 4K clip. This one is the 4K clip. Excellent qual colors, quality, crispness of the image. Basically perfect. We also did a hyperlapse and an optical image stabilization test. You'll find those in the full text to review. And I found the optical image stabilization to be, uh, let's say, okay, not more than that, or better said, good. I've seen better, but it's still in the top 5 optical image stabilization phones. You don't lose focus, but the exposure and the uh, image kind of flickers a bit when you're taking those steps. Okay, so anyway, it feels like it's in the top 3 filming all time, minus the flickering and loss of focus part. We have a perfect microphone, keep that in mind for future concert filming. And let's have a glance at a nighttime video. Not as impressive as the daytime ones, but the conclusion you should remember, when it comes to video capture, the phone is superior to the iPhones, at least, especially if it doesn't have any flickering or focus problems. So overall, very close to the Galaxy S7 during the day and the LG G5, but during the low light capture, sometimes it even beats the S7. Now let's move on to other aspects. Okay, now it's time to talk about the web browser, in this case it's Chrome, and let's see how gsnone.com loads up on this web browser as you can see it has a mid-level speed so to say and we have a good browser benchmarks in sun spider in browser mark and velamo and as far as the virtual keyboard is concerned you can see it has a pretty strange format and the keys may seem a bit too big but in the end it's quite comfy and let's see how the scrolling goes pretty smooth now it's time to discuss the connectivity and as I probably mentioned already, this phone has a nano SIM card slot and supports LTE category 9, which means up to 450 mega per second download speed. There is GPS, there is GLONASS, NFC, Bluetooth 4.2, Wi Fi 802.11a, B, G, N, A, C, there is DLNA and Miracast, as well as AirPlay, which you will not find on many Android phones. Actually, this is the first one, as far as I know. We got the new USB Type-C port at the bottom and there is no infrared or FM radio here in case you were wondering but what we do have are three very capable microphones with noise cancelling. Okay, so as far as calls are concerned, they're clear but they could be a bit louder and the signal was good. And I have to mention yet again, we have a fantastic microphone when it comes to recording, I don't know, podcasts and voice and everything. We got speed dial, block contacts and more settings related to calls right here. And that's it in the connectivity section. Just in case you were wondering, we also did a speed test. Now let's see what came out of that experience. Okay, so screenshots and I promised you speed test, so here we go. This is a test made on the Vodafone network, 64 mega per second in download and 45 mega per second in upload via 4G on a town in western part of Romania. Okay, we proceed now to the software experience. We're dealing here with the Android 6.0 Marshmallow with the latest HTC Sense on top. As far as we know, it's HTC Sense version 8 and it's simple, it's minimal, and it gets rid of a ton of apps trying to avoid bloatware. So Blink Feed has stayed on the leftmost home screen and it's updating right now. It includes some pretty nice news sources here, we got highlights, you can add GSM DOM of course and our sister site Mobilissimo, we got Google+, Plus, Twitter and News Republic, and here you can compose a piece of news or status. And here you can add more stuff, more content from News Republic, Calendar, Google+, LinkedIn. And you can get mealtime recommendations when it's lunchtime. So this is Blink Feed and it remains an optional piece of the interface. And multitasking is done like this. It's a typical multitasking from Marshmallow and Lollipop involving a carousel. The drop-down section includes notifications, quick settings and the brightness slider 
obviously and if you pinch the home screen you can gain access to the widgets area the widgets are pretty straightforward they're also very good looking and one of the best widgets is the already famous uh, uh, sense home which you can see here this is the sense home widget with special collections of apps provided that you're at work or you're at home or you're going out so each time one of these situations arises the collection of apps changes and that can also modify once the phone detects you're in a certain area of the map it knows as home work or out the interface is just as usual pretty elegant it uses hues of green gray and white this time it feels a bit more colorful especially if you keep looking at the menus and the icons of the various pre-installed apps we got an app drawer that organizes the apps in a vertical scrolling fashion and in the settings area let's see what we can find so connectivity we also have htc mini plus support still and then there's the personalized area where you can change wallpaper add apps and widgets manage home screen pages let's go back and then we can change the team we actually had a pretty complex team store with loads of options to play with here you can edit themes we got classic layout freestyle layout and there are a lot of things you can tweak you can change the current home screen layout home wallpaper lock screen wallpaper all apps wallpaper color icons weather ringtone and even the font so quite a bit of variation offered here as i said before a novelty available here is the layout so you can go for a classic layout or a freestyle layout but the latter requires a special team so i know that we have one of those installed so let's find it we got fluorescence available and we selected apply and let's see what happens so the freestyle team means that you can basically move everything around and that includes uh, of course icons uh, of course widgets and some sort of stickers which you can see here you can move them around you can hide their label you can relink them to other apps if you want and everything can be placed anywhere on the screen without restrictions that's what the freestyle is all about you can even overlap them and move them around as you please so that's in a nutshell what HTC's new approach is here of course you may want to revert to a better organized and compartmented team perhaps so let's change team and revert to the stock one and be on with the rest of the settings So aside from the aspect of the personalization, we also have the fingerprint scanner, which can be added in up to five fingerprint versions. So here you can add up to five fingerprints. I'm going to start off by adding mine. Of course, you can secure it with a backup pin. No thanks. Four digits input here. Okay. Show notification content and we should be ready to start. Once you remove the pin and the way the lock screen is secured, you will also remove your fingerprint. Keep that in mind. That is exactly why I'm having to do this again. Okay, now the right side of my print and it's saving, it's all done. And with this, I can wake up the screen and unlock it when need be. So we can start from the standby screen straight. Now let's see what happens at a 90 degrees angle and 180 degrees angle and as you can see worked out just fine fast and accurate and the setup was a bit on the long side but i've seen much longer much longer excuse me now as far as the pre-installed apps are concerned i told you before not as much bloater as before which is good news we have 37 pre-installed apps which is let's say okay compared to other phones out there things to mention here we got mail calendar people these productivity apps photos and teams themes once again with a ton of customization youtube play music there's a very capable voice recorder here you can easily pull off a podcast with it three social networking apps facebook messenger and instagram maps play store the usual google suite and then there's boost plus which is a new face in the htc family basically it boosts your phone cleans up the cache the junk and there's even a game battery booster that allows you to extend battery life while you're playing games listed here so those are the options 
You can also manage apps, clear the junk, lock apps and play around with a bunch of settings. Okay, so this is uh, Boost Plus, there's a calculator, weather, flashlight, then Keep, Google Plus, Sheet Slides and the Zoe Video Editor, which is pretty much the same as last year. You select uh, a bunch of shots, video and photo, you can apply a theme, music and a filter and create a very nice clip from your vacation. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell, it's time for the verdict. This is the HTC 10, the 2016 flagship from HTC and it's time to see what the conclusion is. So on the pro side, we have a comfy phone, that's for sure. We also have a good display, a very good display considering the quality of its colors and the image and uh, it has a top 3 performance, so it's right up there with the other top phones when it comes to the performance in benchmarks and regular day usage. We have a good battery or better said ok battery, superb headphones and I do mean that. Uh, also good acoustics and uh, good picture taking with the main camera, great video capture and superb low light capabilities. Also perfect microphone and audio capture and finally very nice ways to customize the user interface. Those are all pros. Now on the con side, the selfies could be a little bit better. There is no infrared, there is no uh, FM radio. It's bulkier than its rivals. Its rivals gravitate around 7mm, 8mm, this one, 9mm. The price was huge at its debut. The calls could be louder. The battery is just okay, but not enough for modern requirements. Some focus problems here and there while filming. And also uh, the optical instabilization for the front camera feels like a gimmick. Now the conclusion regarding the HTC 10, it's one of the comfier fat phones, if I can say that, on the market right now. It doesn't have deal breakers, which is a nice thing. If you've seen the review for the LG G5, it had two deal breakers, the battery and the display. The HTC 10 does not have that. Meanwhile, it's certainly no Galaxy S7 because it also does not excel in any area except for maybe the headphones, the microphone and low light capture. So those three, if you want headphones, microphone and low light, that's your phone. Of course, very good performance courtesy of the CPU and RAM. So in the end, there's also the interface as an argument. If you've had HTC phones before and played with HTC Sense and love the customization, this is the phone for you. However, where is the 12 hour battery and where is the 600 lux screen? Where is the perfect selfie and where are the louder speakers? Those are the main question you must pose yourself. Still, it's a clear upgrade from the HTC One M9 and you will not regret buying an HTC this year unlike the previous year or two. This is it from gsndon.com. This was the review of the HTC 10. Bye bye.